Welcome back to another episode of Crossing Broadcast. I'm your host, Kyle Pagan. We've got a great episode for you today. It's Eagles 49ers week, and I know a bunch of people have circled this on their schedule since it came out. We've Garrett Stubbs on at 1220 to talk to him about the question everyone wants to know. Will Dancing on My Own be on the playlist next year? But first, let's get into this. We've got Ant San Francisco on. We've got Kevin Kincaid on per usual with his <laughs> God damn it. I just saw the 49ers. Oh, I thought that was a Flyers hat behind the scenes. Look at you and San Francisco. You what should, are you talking about? It's cold out there. You should change your handle, by the way. It says Ant San Philly. It should be it should be changed to Ant San Francisco. Like it's right there. <laughs> My uh Maria's son bought this for me. Uh once he heard you guys start calling me Aunt San Francisco. You so, are. Yeah. So I thought it was uh, I thought it was only appropriate that I pull it out for this for this episode today. Yeah, how uh how excited are you for this for this game this week? 49ers minus three, total 47, a little bit of rain in the forecast. Disrespect. Disrespect. Minus three. No, I don't think it look, it's it's gonna be a good game. I don't think it's anything to to get uber excited about. I mean it's so what are you talking about? Because you guys, I think everybody gets a little bit caught up in things to in the regular season. I really do. Like th- this game may have ramifications. They may not have ramifications, regardless of who wins and who loses. Uh, Kev, Kev, do you always do you already hear the uh, the the backtracking a little bit? A little bit. Of- There's no backtracking. There's no, no backtracking. Like, yeah, this game, you know, you know, it's the battle. But I'm looking to win the war. Like, well, who are you? Now, I, I would say the same thing. If San Francisco wins this game, I will come back on your show and say the same thing. The point is, is, is the point is, is that even if the 49ers win this game, the, the Eagles still have a one game lead on them. And the 49ers would have to pretty much run the table and need the Eagles to lose again, which may not happen when you look at the Eagles schedule. And, it, and so therefore, it doesn't have that much. Yes, it does. Wait, Bird, it doesn't. Birds, like, this is ha- the same Birds thing. haven't won. Birds haven't won in Dallas since 2017. OK. And so but they're better than the Cowboys. Sure, but they, they've been better than the Cowboys before, and they haven't won in Dallas since okay. 2017. But for various reasons. For various reasons, they haven't won. Like, you know, and, and I disagree with – you got a comment, or David Berkowitz just said this is the 49ers Super Bowl. I don't think it is. I don't think it's the 49ers Super Bowl, and I don't think it's the Eagles Super Bowl because I think these two teams are going to see each other again in about two months. You've poured cold water on everybody's 49ers Eagles boner starting because off. Because it's show. a regular season game. That's why. It's, yeah, but there's shit talking going back and forth. Oh, good. Let it, let it happen. That's for the players. That's for the players. Let that happen. Let all the shit talking go. That's let the players do. They shit talk every game. You think the Eagles aren't going to shit talk the Giants? You think they aren't going to shit talk the Arizona Cardinals? They're going to because that's what happens in the NFL. Shit talking goes on on the field in every game. Right. Kev, has there been has there been many many games that you can remember on the top of your head? First eleven of them shit talking and this other team as bad as this one was. This one, this one has been circled. I've had it circled. Mm-hmm. I'm course, the most I'm the most pragmatic week to week guy on the planet, and I've had this one circled. Two yeah. things can be true, and San Francisco yeah, fans fans are always going to circle circle it, right? Fans are always going to yeah. because they've been circling it since the, the schedule came out in April. Yeah. Of course. I get it. I'm not telling fans don't get excited. I'm not t- but when I'm but you asked me what my mentality is on it and I'm I'm as pragmatic as they come in sports and I tell you that it doesn't matter until it matters and I don't think this game is as big a deal as everybody else makes it out to be. We're having and, fun with it, of and, course. And and she's been too a part of too many big games. You know, this is just another one, you know, another notch in the belt for Ant. Uh, maybe it's the baseball guy in me. Maybe it is. Maybe it's the baseball in me because you play 162 games in baseball and like you can't get so fired up over one game or one series against a team. Like I can remember back in the regular season, it's funny that it was San Francisco, but the Giants were coming in, right? And everybody was talking about how big of a series for the Phillies and the Giants that was going to be. And I kept sitting there saying, This series don't mean anything. It's not. This is not a telltale for the Phillies. The Giants aren't very good. Like this is just because they got off to a good start. The series means nothing. And in the end of the year, it meant nothing. <laughs> the series not mean different. Damn thing. 16, 17 games in a season. I understand right? that football games individually m- matter more. I get that. But mm-hmm. the Eagles have positioned themselves, and frankly, so have the 49ers, positioned themselves to a point where the outcome of this game isn't going to 
change the fact that they're going to win the that these two teams are going to win the divisions. The only thing that it could affect is if San Francisco wins and somehow the Eagles get upset the rest of the way, then yeah, the 49ers could be the number one seed and the Eagles be the number two seed. So there you is, think it's easy going into Seattle and winning in Seattle? What, what, have you watched the Seahawks? I've watched the Seahawks. What about them in, impresses you? They're, right now, there are like two teams in the NFL, and you're and they're going to play each other this week. Twelfth man, Macklemore <laughs> raising the flag, getting the people going before the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fish Still, market that apparently Chris can't hold us. Yeah. spent eight hundred dollars at because he on. couldn't read what you know. You know what the worst part about, about, about that fish market? Not that I want to get on go off on a tangent. Either, no, have, I been, either have you been to Seattle? <laughs> No, I would never go. I would never step foot in Seattle. So that fish thing is kind of cool, you know, when they throw the fish around, right? It's kind of a neat little thing that they do. You watch it for five minutes and it's funny and okay, fine. And then the next time they do it, you're like, okay, they did just did the same trick they just did five minutes ago. But right off to the side of it, literally 30 feet away outside that fish market, there's mm-hmm. a there's like this little path. And you walk down this path, and there is something called the gum wall. And it might be the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life in person I like because that. it is an entire wall, city wall, and it's about a block long. This is not like something that's just like one little tiny brick wall. It is the the, the whole tunnel that leads alongside the waterfront there. And it's everybody sticking their chewed gum on the wall. And it's like all different colors and it's all just covered in gum. And I think it's the most disgusting thing because it's you look at it and you're like that. All these were in people's mouths and we're standing here taking pictures with it. Look at look at that nonsense. Right. Anything for the gram, man. Anything for the gram. <laughs> I mean, come on. How gross is this? <laughs> well, it is the Pacific Northwest, right? I mean, this is some, you know, straight up hipster shit right here. But Pagan, why don't you want to go to Seattle or why would you never step foot? I in just Seattle? have no interest in Seattle. I don't understand the the hubbub about it i'm not gonna ever go see the washington huskies uh, maybe if the seattle supersonics come back i don't care about going to see the amazon headquarters or the microsoft headquarters or i, I don't know i mean seattle's always rainy there it looks kind of dull it looks kind of cloudy it looks like it does right the original the- starbucks sick i got 17 of them in the next three blocks actually the original one's actually kind of cool but you know um, you don't think the gum wall the gum wall would fit in pretty well in in philadelphia i think <laughs> I think the gum wall needs, is is what's holding Geno Smith's shoulder together right now. <laughs> Put the gum wall right next to the uh, dumpster swimming pool that they were using on uh, Frankfurt Avenue a couple of years ago. This is yeah. kind of like I now know what it's like to be uh, AJ Hawk on McAfee's show, where you just kind of like you just kind of sit there and don't talk for like ten minutes at a time. You know, I could probably just log off right now and let you guys argue about the San Francisco. <laughs> San Francisco game. How could it, how could it not be a big game? How could you not? How could you not like have juice for this? You know, it's a it's for as Debo, far as for Debo regular Samuel, season, all games. the shit that he said. But it was all of them too. Like the focus is on Debo Samuel, well, but Kyle Shanahan took no accountability for his shitty blocking schemes that got his quarterbacks killed. The the kicker was talking about Jalen Hurts. I mean, none none of them accepted the outcome mm-hmm. of that game, and they just kept saying, "Well, we played with ten men, and you know, with you know, bad luck." And all this stuff. Part of the reason they played with ten men is because they're trying to block Hassan Reddick with with tight end backup well, tight ends and wham blocks and all this stuff. I mean, they got they got you know outplayed. The, the injury was part of them getting outplayed and out schemed. And I, I I like to talk about luck for a second because I I and this might surprise you. What my what my take on this? Here we go. But how many bad teams talk about luck? You never hear uh, bad teams say, well, we had bad luck or the other team got lucky, right? Yeah. You never hear that. So the reality of it is, is that, you know, the Eagles are 10 and 1. And have they had lucky moments or fortunate moments? Sure. But that, you know what? If they were a bad team, they wouldn't have those moments. Oh, wait. So are we saying they have championship DNA? Or are we saying they're lucky? Neither. Neither. They're what lucky. I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is they're a good team, right? Mm-hmm. Is, and when you're a good team, luck comes your way. And that's just any team, any good team. I'm not just saying the Eagles. In other words, it, the, the, the bad fortunes of the opposition are highlighted when, the, uh, when, the te- when there's a good team playing, right? So right. good teams get lucky because the mistakes of the, of the opposition are 
exacerbated because they can't they can't make as many and expect to win those games. So when you sit there and say, you know, oh well, geez, if Mark if Valdez Scantling just catches the touchdown, the Eagles would have lost that game. But the Eagles were in a position to win the game. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And same thing like last week. Like, well, you know, Buffalo. They, you could have gone any number of ways with Buffalo. Yeah. You know, the nine penalties and in, in, in the, in the three penalties on the first touchdown drive, the missed field goal, the you know Gabe Davis running the wrong route, the not calling the penalty on the you know should have been a horse, horse collar, whatever. Like any number of those things. But the fact of the matter is, is the Eagles were in the position to win the game. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, you could sit there and say luck is – and I'm sure you could sit there and watch any good team's games. Watch the 49ers wins. And you could say, well, if this didn't happen, well, then whatever. Or this didn't happen. What? But that's what happens in sports. When you're a good team, you, your luck is because you're a good team. Is, well, here's the this, this, this saying goes, Anthony San Francisco. Yeah. That luck is the uh, intersection where preparation meets opportunity. Mm. Yeah. So you have to be in a position to capitalize on that luck in the first place. Case in point, when Kyle sold the website or when Kyle came up with the betting business model or whatever, everybody had the opportunity right. to disappear into a rabbit hole like he did and think, how can I make millions of dollars off of legal sports betting? You know, So was, yeah. there, some luck, was there luck in the Supreme Court overturning the thing when they did yes but he was there to capitalize on it because mm-hmm. he was smart and he knew what the fuck he was doing you know what i'm saying so I, I i get all of that i tend to agree with that i just my thing about san francisco is like everybody i, I can't remember a game where i heard more excuses and more complaints afterwards you know bonte hill and the white dude whatever his name is com- constantly c- complaining and crying about it debo tripling down on calling james bradbury trash um, hanging up on Zach Gelb's radio show because he didn't want to talk about it. Then he goes on with Kay Adams and says, um, you know, if I said what I said, you know, tri- triple quadrupling down on at this point. And then perhaps in somewhat uninten- in unintentional or ironic moment, he says, I'm not going to ask Kyle Shanahan to go like hit him or chip him or anything like that. When a chip blocker maybe would have helped them keep their quarterbacks upright and in the in the game, last year you know that's what i'm saying like why can't you just like like, like nobody on their team i uh, correct me if i'm wrong i don't remember but i don't remember a single 49ers player saying like they were better you know they knocked her you know the reason they we didn't have a quarterback is because their pass rush got home and they knocked him out of the game like what I, like the excuses you like, know what you know can i that? i'll address you have 10 guys because they i'll address that i'll address, address that it. as a leader I, of the fan base of yeah. niner nation <laughs> niner nation yeah uh, i'll address that the, the answer to that question, and this is to me, I think, an answer for any for any team, and what it should be for any team, is when you're when you lose a game like that, you, you, what what good is it to go out and say, hey, the other team's good, and they they beat us? Like, why do we why do we have to soften? Why do you have to soften the blow? Like, what's the point? Like, go out there, you, you're pissed off that you lost. You're pissed off that you didn't play the way that you wanted to play, right? <laughs> Yeah, but don't make an excuse for it. I mean, no, like, but like, it, I mean, you can you can sit there and say what say whatever you want. The fact of the matter is, is that it should motivate you to want to come back the next time, the next opportunity you have to play that team and beat that team. Like to me, I, I would not want to hear people say, you know, my my team say, you know, oh well, the other team just was better. That's not a good enough excuse for me. Oh bullshit! Okay, it's but, not. Yes, yeah, yes, but yes, but the, the, they're ignoring the reality of of what actually happened. You know, when they yeah. say we were playing with ten guys, they weren't playing with ten guys because Brock Purdy came down with COVID and didn't pass the the test, and the NFL put him on the exempt list, so they didn't come to play with 10 guys because Brock Purdy tripped over a, a cord and injured his arm the night before they were playing with 10 guys. Cause the Eagles defense knocked two quarterbacks out of the game. Well, not and that was a, an in-game strategic schematic like thing. It wasn't an accident. Like they were the better team because they got home and Kyle Shanahan's bogus scheme had mm-hmm. a backup tight end, try to block him one-on-one and then George Kittle coming over and whiffing and they had a free run on his quarterback. So if you don't want to play with 10 guys, come up with a better blocking scheme or like, like plan, plan for that. You know what I'm saying? It, it was, it was the excuses as if they didn't have anything themselves to do with it. The like, oh, Brock Brock my- just ended up coming out of the game. Josh Johnson ended up coming out again. Why did they end up out of the game? Because the, because the Eagles defensive line put them on their ass. 
The 49ers, Mark, in my opinion, they show their true colors when Trent Williams threw Kayvon Wallace on the ground. And that's when I was not surprised about the whole excuse train. Remember that? I mean, they literally had like a, almost a brawl at the uh, end where the, both teams I, had to go back to the sidelines. And Trent Williams just comes in and just throws Kayvon Wallace down on the ground. Like that's when they showed their true colors, in my I'm opinion. Sure. I'm sure everybody was was like you know beyond frustrated at that point, but yeah, I mean you don't grab the dude and friggin' throw him. But I don't I don't know. And you remember like the beginning of that game last year though. I mean there was a like the key moment early on was like was the Eagles replay booth like telling them to throw the the challenge flag yeah. for the fumble and like it was really close for a while. You know, yeah. they like the San Fran's defense was playing their ass off. So I get that. And, and I, 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 I think, and I think they're that, bitter about it. And know? that's why I say to people, you know, sometimes go back and watch w- where that game was before the, before Purdy went out. It was um, tight and it was it, close. It was, it was. And yeah. I'm not saying that it would have stayed that way, nor am I saying that the 49ers would have won the game. Do I think it would have been the smackdown that it was? No. But I, you know, the Eagles, the Eagles would have been in for a, a much different game. I, look, I give them credit because the, you know, they end up being the best team all year last year, and they get to the Super Bowl. And right now, they're the best team in the in the NFL, and that's just the way it is. And San Francisco, if they're going to if they're going to come in here and win, they're going to come in here and win. If they don't come in here and win, then the Eagles remain the best team in football. And if the 49ers win, then there's a debate until the end of January when they'll play each other again, whether it's here or in San Francisco. But that's why I'm, I'm sitting here telling you that, yeah, I mean, for, for the week, for, for a fun week of football, sure, if you're a fan, get excited. But to me, this is all about the fans. That's what this all this excited. And believe me, Pagan has been at this for how long when he was calling into – Calling into the San Francisco radio station. I've been talking about this game for, for months. <laughs> because, now, so. Yeah, because they didn't atone for their sins. Okay, but you yeah. can't come and tell us that we're the let scummiest you, fan base in the world. Question now. Let me ask you a question. Let's let's let's, 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 let's have let's have truth let's have truth serum uh, time here for just a second. <laughs> let's just imagine the shoe was on the other foot. Do you honestly think that the Philadelphia fans would wouldn't do the same thing? Stab somebody at a Wendy's? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, it was in an In-N-Out burger, I think. Yeah. Yeah, no, but you know what I mean. But like, be be it would be just the the roles would be flipped, and they honestly would, and that wouldn't make you know 49ers fans right and Eagles fans wrong, or Eagles fans right and 49ers fans wrong. It's just that the outcome of the game resulted in what it resulted in, and. This is what this is what it's brought about for fans to talk about. And that's good. And that's why the look, that's why the NFL is where it is, because it it allows for fans to have this kind of, you know, crazy discourse about regular season games. But I mean, let's, you know. All right. All right. Well, before we get to our guest, I want a prediction. You want a prediction for the game? I know or what you're gonna have I, I, for dinner. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, Maria's sick. Actually, I'll be at Macnow's event tonight. So, uh, whatever they're serving out at uh, Puddler's. Are you guys doing the show? Are you doing Snow the Goalie? We're doing Snow the Goalie from out oh. there. Yeah, me well, and Bundy will be there. Ru- Russell will be from home because he can't he can't get away from home for three straight nights. Oh, so he can um, so he can bullshit on the intermission show last night and let it go completely off the rails. But he can't do two. He can't do two shows in a row. Well, he's got a, there's a Flyers home game tomorrow night too. So you, that would be three nights in a row out. Of uh, We're asking, <laughs> yeah, asking right, for well, a lot there. He's got to pace himself. Yeah, yeah, he does. Um, now I'm I'm gonna and uh, you're gonna. Crack, you're not going to be surprised by this, but I will, I'm going to pick San Francisco in this game, and not because I think it's going to be a blowout or anything like that. I think it's going to be a very good game. I think it's going to be a lower scoring game, um, and I think it's a, I think it's a field goal game. Um, I think the spread is probably right on, um, and it's it, and look, I think I think it can go the other way. I do think the Eagles can win the game too, but I'll take I'll take San Francisco in this one. I'll say it'll be uh, 23 49ers. Uh, and it I won't got, matter because I still think the Eagles will be the number one seed at the end of the year. So it don't. And so it doesn't right. matter. Right. That's <laughs> a bold pick honesty. for a sports Listen. program. I'm going to tell you why none of this matters. Yeah. I got. The well, 49ers I mean, it's, hold on. I'm trying to give my prediction. Go ahead. I got the 49ers too. I do. I think they win the battle, and I think we win the war in the NFC Championship. And that could be the cha- that could be the truth. I could you could be spot on with that, Kyle. But I'm playing the over over 47. I like the over in this. I think the Eagles get down 14 early. And they claw back, and it's like 31 24, but it's 31 17 for like most of the game. So I got the over in that. Kev, do you want to make one or we want to bring our guest on? 
I think the Eagles win 21 to 20 and then they get their ass kicked in Dallas. And that, and I will take that trade off. I will take that trade off too. That's the, uh, if that's a trade off. All right. Hey, let's get to our guest. He's a Phillies catcher. He's the Chiefs vibes officer, former Johnny Bench (laughs) vibes award winner. We've got on the program today, Garrett Stubbs. What's up, Stubbs? How are we doing, boys? How are we doing? Hey, hey. Not as good as you. I'll tell you that, man. Congrats on the new deal. Yeah, thank you very much. I got a job next year, boys. <laughs> Kid has a job. <laughs> how important? I mean, that, how, how important was it for you to, to come back to Philly, dude? I love it here. I mean, it is uh, the best sports. I said it when my post when I uh, found out that I was coming back. It's the best sports city in the world, uh, and there's no doubt about it. I know people talk about soccer overseas and how crazy that can be, and I can imagine that the fans over there. Are absolutely buck wild but uh in philadelphia it really doesn't get much better as a sports town so i mean i just heard you guys talking about the eagles game uh and what they got coming up with the niners so uh yeah to be in a city like that it's it's awesome yeah are you a i know you grew up in san diego are you a chargers fan or are you pissed that they left and you're like no i'm past tense yeah past tense it was a was a chargers fan growing up but um once they left i mean it's tough to hang on to a a fan base um when you leave to basically your rival city in in baseball football um i guess wasn't football there's no football team but they're kind of the rams little brother up there right they go to they go to la the rams get the stadium the chargers rent out that bank of california it was it was a tough it was a tough exit for san diego but i got a feeling somebody will buy the team and come and bring them back to San Diego, riding in on their white horse, and everyone will love them again. I feel like that. That would uh, that'd be a good play. Yeah. Hey, so so you're not the only one that got paid this offseason. We also have Aaron Nola. He'll be back this year. Guy you catch for, guy you love. Um, yeah. I always I always wonder this because in, the, in NFL, it's played during Christmas, and the big-name quarterback will always get the lineman a nice little Christmas gift. I'm pretty sure – uh, Jalen Hurts got the guys Louis Vuitton bags last year. You guys have like Flag Day, Independence <laughs> Day, Flag Memorial Day. Day. Like, like <laughs> do, the, do the starters Day. do the starters get you know the catchers who grind for them or on their knees 162 games? You know anything? We uh, so not specifically like we don't have a a designated uh, celebration Flag Day where everyone gets their own personalized. Uh, uh flag but we do we do stuff throughout the season all the time i mean every single road trip i mean that's the beauty of our team and i don't think that that happens uh around the league uh especially when i talk to guys on other teams uh they don't have that same uh camaraderie and desire to actually be with your teammates outside of the field the same way that we do uh so when we land in a city obviously families go along with guys at times and so They go spend time with their family if we go to another city. But uh, there's always a group of guys that's going out and grabbing dinner and hanging out. And and you bet your ass those rich guys are paying. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Speaking of, uh, you you told um, Bob and I that last this summer that you were, you know, how much you liked catching Knowles and how, how great of a pitcher he is. Was there ever a thought in your mind that he wouldn't come back this year? that like he might actually take another offer and go somewhere else? Or did you in your heart of hearts know that this is where he wanted to be and and then he would come back? I mean, when you word it like that, uh, no, I thought no matter what he's coming back as far as if he gets an offer that is reasonable in the price range that he deserves, uh, then he would be coming back because the guy loves pitching in Philly. uh, And it's a, we all know how hard it is to play or be a player in Philadelphia, whether it's the Sixers, Eagles, Phillies, um, Flyers. It's it's a tough place to play. The fans have an expectation. Uh, but we have a group of guys collectively amongst all of us that love playing there. And I think everyone sees it on the field. And, and Knowles is no exception to that. He loves going out there and riling up that fan base and knows that you know, if he doesn't go and bring it that day, he's going to hear about it. Uh, but, I mean, the preparation that he goes through uh, week after week, uh, that's kind of what we hang on to, right? We all know that we're in there in the weight room or throwing our bullpens or out there in batting practice, working and making sure that we're prepared for whatever game we have that day. And and Knowles is right on line with all that. So 
the fact that he came out and said that he had other offers and other reporters came out and said that he had other offers with a bigger dollar amount and he chose to come back to Philadelphia. Uh, just a testament to the kind of guy he is, the way he feels about Philadelphia. And there better be 46,000 people or however many people there are at the first game that he, he pitches on their feet, giving him the loudest standing ovation because uh, he deserves it all, man. Yeah. Yeah, the best part about that story too is that it wasn't it wasn't linear, you know. I mean, he did that players tribune article, I want to say like 2019 or whatever, Kyle, I think when we pulled it up on the show, 2018 I think it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he admitted he's like, "Yeah, there's a lot of cars, there's a lot of traffic. Like, I, I'm not familiar with this, you know." Yeah. He, he, he's you know, a country he, boy. He, yeah, cuz he's a country boy, right? But I mean, he's a I, swamp I, boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Baton wow. Rouge. Yeah, Baton Rouge. I thought yeah. Baton Rouge was like is not New Orleans. No, 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 not even close, dude. Not even close. Down there. No, they have uh, LSU is down there, Kyle. But like, yeah, no, New Orleans is really the one. Yes, is the big city down there. But I, I don't know. Was he a Braves fan? Gary, was he a Braves fan growing up? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who, what team he was a fan of growing up. It's kind of a tough place to be. I guess you kind of got your pick of the litter if you're growing up in Baton Rouge of who you want to be a fan fan of. Yeah, yeah, it's probably somewhere between like Texas and Atlanta. Yeah, because there's nothing down there. Because yeah, Houston. I guess remember when when all those people were displaced during the hurricane, they a lot of people ended up in Houston. Oh yeah, yeah. so maybe some Astros. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you would admit he's a he was a Braves fan growing up, even if he was. <laughs> That's right. Not now, at this anyway. point. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that because you have so many obviously guys from different parts of the country in the locker room. Guys from Nevada, guys from Florida, guys from California, Texas, down uh, down south. Georgia, um, you guys ever like talk about like where the best baseball players come out of? We that argument's come up before. Yeah, obviously, obviously you you. I think you got your big three, right? Okay. You got California, you got Texas, and you have Florida. And I know Georgia's Georgia's mixed in there, but coming from uh, San Diego, I honestly didn't hear about Georgia other than like the tournaments that were played out there. Um, I think the East Cobb tournament is in Georgia. It's a big one. Um, but I think those are the big three. Obviously, I'm a California guy, so I, yeah, I'm going to stick with California being the, the juggernaut of uh, baseball talent. Uh, but, yeah, Texas and Florida, we played teams there in high, against their, uh, those guys in high school. Obviously, you go to college and you see guys from around the country, and it feels like California, Texas, and Florida are always the, the big states that come up as far as talent goes. But yeah, the argument favorite. does come up in the locker room, and I, it's, <laughs> it's always fun to it's always fun to 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 have some good banter around stuff like that. One more thing, you can't, and I guess like it's so weird because you went to USC. You know, Trey goes to NC State, but like Bryce comes out of high school. Other guys come from overseas and everything. Is there ever like USC's playing NC State? Because like we see that all the time with like Auburn and Alabama and football, or UK versus Louisville and, and basketball and everything. Are you ever like betting guys like, yo, you got to go, you know, wear my USC jersey if uh, if USC beats up on NEMA college here? Every game. Every <laughs> single time USC plays somebody that's in the locker room. I have, I've had bets with front office people. That they, <laughs> they, uh, Sam Fold this year, I had a bet with him against Stanford, and I gave him uh, – I think the spread was 27, but I gave him 21 points, and I think we blew him out by – more than that yeah. uh so i had a bet with him uh i bet with k long against arizona by the way bryce harper was a college guy don't forget I, that where do you go was, he was a junior college he went junior. to oh, uh on. what Stop. was it i can't even remember what the name he's of the more college. ohio state than he yeah. is junior college. <laughs> uh he i like had a guy. bet with uh kevin long for arizona and i gave him points and we ended up beating him in overtime mm -hmm. And so I lost the bet, but I gave him a, a hundred dollar bill and I just wrote, I don't know what the cussing policy is on. Oh, here. you can go right ahead. You're good. All right. I wrote on the, I wrote on the dollar bill. We still won. Fuck you, Kevin. <laughs> 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 right, right across the hundred dollar bill. I said, go ahead and try to spend this somewhere. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, Hey, Kev, can I, can I send that to you after the 49ers game this Sunday? <laughs> Yeah, 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 right. I'm trying to I'm trying to look on Bryce's Wikipedia is so damn long. I can't find the part about JUCO on here. I got to scroll through all this this stuff. JUCO does count. Yeah, and they don't have a football team to bet with. Yeah, yeah. let me see. Uh, uh 
Yeah, but if you no, if you can let him adopt Ohio State, then you can't you can't really. Okay, here it is. For the 2010 game. college season, 17 year old Harper enrolled at the College of Southern Nevada. 17 year old yeah. Harper, unreal. <laughs> yeah. So of the uh, the scenic West Athletic uh, Conference, the the SWAC. I've the never scenic heard West Athletic Conference. Yeah. The great <laughs> scenic West Athletic Conference. <laughs> I need to I need to get a, my own Wikipedia account and start writing some BS on my teammates' <laughs> Wikipedia pages. Your your Wikipedia is pretty good. I was on it yesterday. It's yeah. it, it's good. It's concise. You can you can read it. You don't the well, Kyle. There's not much. There's well, not much. There's, 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 not, there's not seventeen year old Bryce Harper first overall pick accolades. Sure. You not, know, a of, not a lot concise of concise is a good word though. I like I like the word concise. Yeah, yeah. it could yeah. be a, could be a better photo. I mean, you know, you're not even in Welcome uniform. <laughs> It should be it, it uh, should honestly be. pretty pretty fitting on the bench <laughs> looking at the boys. I got more energy than that though. That's the only thing that must yeah. have been a low point in the game. <laughs> so, so there you go. So like it should be you in the locker room in the overalls after this year. I mean, obviously you're the chief vibes officer. Whether you, I don't think you call yourself that. I'm sure it was bestowed no. That's upon not me. that's not self proclaimed. That yeah. is bestowed upon me. Yeah. <laughs> How how did that kind of start? Just like the chief vibes officer, the whole thing. Uh, it started because our social media girl Megan, uh, who's awesome. She was a she does great on our social media page, uh, and she's easy to talk to. She all of a sudden one day, I think she just posted on her on the Philly story, calling me the chief vibes officer, and I was like, Megan, what are you doing? <laughs> And then of course it, it caught fire and I'm like, hey, you know, I'll 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 uh I'll be the Chiefs vibes officer. I like I like the positive vibe it gives out and I you know I do take pride in kind of giving some good energy to the locker room uh in a one hundred and sixty two game season, you know, it's necessary. You see each other every single day. So somebody's gotta bring a little bit of spice in the locker room on a daily basis. Yeah, but you know how popular that stuff is, man. I mean, this year and last year. We we ended up doing record site traffic at Crossing Broad based off the strength of the Phillies runs both years. Thank you. Because it was all the – yeah, I think we probably owe you Thank like – for the bonus. <laughs> yeah, love that. I'll check – I'll uh, look for my royalties check in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll send the royalties. We'll send you the royalties like – uh, I, I bought a FOCO overall, so if you got any cash from that, I want my royalties check <laughs> like that. Hey, right now, let's call FOCO. I didn't see any of – I didn't see any cash. And I, you know, I think they made a boatload of money off of that, but you know, maybe next, you know, we're going to, we're going to talk about maybe something for next year. I'll, I'll come up with, we'll come up with our own apparel and, <laughs> and get everybody bought in. I was thinking maybe like a, like a construction hat with the two beer cans on the side type <laughs> thing. Okay. Yeah. We, you know, we, get, we're going to try to fill something out. Can't, can't bring the overalls back next year. I think we got to. All right. There's got to be something new and genuine that happens organically every single year. Well, then. And don't just, get me wrong. You can still wear the overalls to the stadium. That's a fire look. It is a great <laughs> that look. That is a fire look. It is a good look. <laughs> so you set us, you put the ball right on the tee. I'm going to knock it out of the park right now. Dancing on my own. What happens to it? I think we got to have a poll. I'm going to put on my Instagram at some point uh, before the season starts and see what the vibe is throughout the fan base of how they feel. But here's the thing. We tried to get rid of it. This year, yeah. Right? Cause we, we understand that what we want to, what we, I mean, we, what we set out for at the beginning of the year is a championship. It's not to, it's not to win a bunch of games. It's not to get to the playoffs. It's to win a division championship and then win the world series. And it's not like, coming up short of that is not is an unsuccessful season. What we've done the last two years has been incredible and it's hard to do what we did the last two years, but we walk away with a bitter taste in our mouth and it sucks when you don't win the last game of the season. It sucks. And it doesn't matter if you got knocked out in the wild card or if you got knocked out in the world series, when you don't win that final game of the year. It sucks. Um, so back to the, to the song, it ended up coming back this year and mm -hmm. it happened basically because we were sucking and we were like, you know what? That song brings good vibes. Uh, everyone enjoys it. So let's bring it back. And we kind of brought it back quietly. I think it leaked out of the locker room, which isn't, you know, that's all good. You know, we are all for people in the fan base 
having a good connection to what we do in the locker room. So it came back and we ended up going on a pretty solid run. And so it stuck. Yeah. Do we try to boot it out right out the gate and see what happens? Do we say, screw it. It's good vibes. Uh, let's go on a run with it again. I tell you right I mean, now, but I think a poll and seeing what the fans think is. Well, is what do reasonable. you guys think? What do you, I, I, I think the vibes right now are in the toilet with it. Yeah. <laughs> like Kev, I, I, love, I, I love to know what you think. You. I mean, I would agree with you. We've done it two years in a row. It's been a, a shit ton of fun. I mean, that song is, that song really set our city fire. Like people were bought in, people enjoyed it. And it's always easy to say, you know, screw that song when you lose and all that. And I hated it. And, you know, I've had people tweet at me. I can't believe that song was here again this year. I'm like, fuck off, dude. You had, I know that you're up, up there in the stands like singing that. it while we were winning and buy, and everything yep. was good. Yep. And then as yep. soon as, you know, yep. we lose, it's, you know, that song's got to go. I hate it and all this, you know. <laughs> well, BS. speaking of royalties, if Caleb Scott can just slide you a little bit of royalties before you scream, <laughs> come on, dude. You pay for that, that guy got- for kids to go to college. Dude, yes. that guy has made so much money in the last two years. I uh, Today, I just uh, looked at my Instagram, and I'm getting uh, DMs and, like, tags of people doing their Spotify uh, wrapped uh, whatever, you know, that the they do at the end of the year. Yeah. 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 And it's, like, number one song, Dancing on My Own. Number two song, Dick Down in Dallas. And then the <laughs> list goes on, like, as it goes down the line. And I wanted uh, Trey Lewis. He went like he went platinum last year, uh, off the back of a song. bunch of guys singing "Dick Down in Dallas" in the locker room. What a, I mean, greatest country in the world. Sports Center had a field day with that one. Every single interview yeah. in the background, "Dick Down in Dallas" <laughs> is playing. I think it comes on like as soon as the media gets in there. Quality <laughs> timing. <laughs> Yeah, Pagan was trying to figure out how to do like a, a a remix of a cover song and get his like get his bag. You know, that's why well, I, yeah. I could write a number one song. I could you know what? Maybe we need to call Meek Mill and be like, "Hey, man, you're a Philly guy. Let's get a let's get a song out there about the Phils." Maybe we've kind of disowned him a little bit because he he went to the yeah. Patriots Super Bowl um, celebration. He's tight with like Bob Kraft and all them. You know. Uh, like I know they helped him get out of jail, but are you a, a real Philly fan or not? You know, so you know, try. Help me get out of jail. I might be friends with them too. But <laughs> <laughs> like I know they help you get out of jail, but are you a real Philly fan or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, the, the real Philly fan, you know, question, no doubt. Somebody gets me out of jail, we're friends for life. Yeah, unfortunately, that's probably the that's probably the way it's got to go. Yeah. Hey, Garrett, were you were you like is were you surprised at how the uh, the quote about the Arizona pool about jumping in the pool was like received. What a joke, dude. <laughs> I was like, I was like, thank you. Go ahead. I mean, Philadelphia Inquirer, right? They write the article and they do it with a negative connotation. They even like tweet it with like, this is bad vibes from the chief vibes officer, yeah. yada, um, yada, yada, dude. We were cracking up and like blown by people actually taking the if we win two games in arizona we'll we'll beeline it for the pool like get out of here with that (laughs) and then it was funny the the other funny part too is the whole conversation leading like that that quote came out of was was it was like me and like 10 reporters like sitting, standing there. It was on the practice day. And I was trolling myself about how I got to get in the, in an NLCS or a, a, an NLCS game. And I was like laughing about how, well, one, how cool it was. Like I was, I, that, that was freaking awesome. But then I'm trolling myself about the fact that, you know, cause I don't play and I got in there. I was like, you know, we got to score 10 runs. Maybe if we score 15 runs, I'll get in at bat, you know, and I'm, and I'm messing around with them about that. And then, uh, you know, somebody asked me, Oh, have you seen the memes of you and the pool? And they're like, you know, there's a bunch of memes of like the LeBron, like he 
he's staring down whoever in the playoff game, and it's like, oh, Stubbs staring down the pool. Uh, there was one about with like Forrest Gump, you know, running down the <laughs> yeah. road, yeah. and it's like, mm-hmm. and it said Stubbs beelining it for the pool, and everyone was having fun with it. And uh, yeah, they asked me, hey, if you if you win two games here in Arizona, will you jump in the pool? And I brought up the Paul Seawald uh talking mm-hmm. about how yeah you know if people went on our stadium you know go ahead and jump in the pool and so i was like you know if he says it and there's no disrespect there yeah if we win two games here in philadelphia or in arizona we'll beeline it for the pool and then, it, 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 it's just <laughs> funny because we I, we were all like like we had a field day with the arcia thing you know, and Bryce staring him down when he when he sure. went, went around the base path, and sure. then Merrill Kelly comes out like before game two and says something totally innocuous, just about like the student wasn't sure how loud the stadium was going to be. So you give Philly fans an inch, and it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna you know we'll we'll prove prove you uh you know a certain way. But like that was innocuous too. He was like like Merrill Kelly wasn't coming in here and saying like. <clears throat> Citizens Bank Park sucks and every Phillies fan is a piece of shit. You know what I mean? It's like it, it, like the concept of bulletin board material is funny to me because you're playing in the NLCS already. If you can't get motivated to, to play in the NLCS with a chance to at the World Series on the line, then really what, what, what the hell are you a professional athlete for in the first place? Dude, the amount of times that I said that exact quote, which I had, I have, this is the first interview when anybody's ever asked me because those reporters that were there during that interview – came up to me at the next day after it, it had caught fire and the guy who wrote it died but the other eight to nine literally every single other person that was in there for that that uh interview was like dude i am so sorry and he's there like i can't believe that that went and they wrote it in the direction that they did they're like and i'm like dude you don't you don't have to apologize one you didn't write it and two people are going to draw to whatever they want to draw to for the same reason you know the merrill kelly quote it was like we were laughing about it like because in the locker room we knew like oh god you know (laughs) fans are gonna find a reason for this one yeah we knew we knew merrill kelly was just saying yeah i played in the wbc awesome atmosphere atmosphere you know can't imagine it would get much bigger but we'll see kind of thing and yeah, well, yeah, but likewise, it was like it wasn't. It wasn't like I thought your quote, even like in a vacuum, was innocuous. You know, it's not like Garrett Stubbs yeah. said. Um, yeah, maybe I played a part too because I went on Twitter and said Garrett Stubbs should take a shit in the pool before they yeah. fly. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, that's just funny. Yeah. That's just like being funny, right? right. Like yeah. you're just messing around. Being funny and yeah. uh yeah. yeah, people run away with whatever they want. Dude, we were buying no, no, no. tickets to the to the Arizona Diamondbacks game three. We're yeah. buying tickets to their stadium because they yeah. couldn't fill their own stadium. Like we were the cockiest motherfuckers. We were on an all-time <laughs> cocky, cocky heater. It was, dude, it was hilarious. And and even so, right? Like what I said, not cocky. It was asked yeah. a question about jumping in the pool if we win two games. Yeah. And the, does, do people not like pools? Like, I do right. not like having pool you, parties. Is that a is that my out of it? I don't know if you watched another the World here? Series. I don't blame you for not watching the World Series if you didn't. But there was a picture of the Rangers clinching, and the Diamondback security were in front of the pool. <laughs> they did not let them go to the pool. It was I was embarrassed for him, and I know the the players over there, dude, are great dudes. Yeah. And another thing is, they're good baseball players. I know that they were the underdogs because they're young and unproven, but those are good baseball players over there, man. And the leadership that they probably get from Evan Longoria, who isn't exactly the player that he was, that guy's bringing leadership to that team and showing the young guys, hey, man, we've been in the playoffs. And that's a good baseball team. And I was a little embarrassed for Lovelo, their manager, when he came out and, like, really set that quote on fire and mentioned it in his post-game interview – trying to troll me, calling me the backup catcher as if I don't already know that. Like, <laughs> dude, like you're – and and you're discrediting your players. Like you're acting like they need some of – some. he calls it external motivation. Yeah. As if what you were saying, Kevin, yeah. if you're playing in professional sports and your motivation isn't holding up that beautiful trophy in the city that you play for – 
and have that parade down Broad Street or wherever it is you have your parade, if that isn't your, if you need more motivation than that, then you are in the wrong business and you need to look in the mirror and check yourself, man. Yeah, I mean, it, come on. And it's been, you know what it's been like, it feels like it's only gotten worse to me. I don't know if you, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw or, or watched, watched any of um, the national championship game in college football last year where Georgia just beat the brakes off of TCU. And then a bunch of the Georgia guys came out afterwards and they were like, nobody, everybody doubted us. People said we were going seven and five. I'm sitting there thinking like Kirby Smart must have done a <laughs> like a North Korea state television style prop <laughs> propaganda thing on these guys. Because I don't know. Nobody in the country thought Georgia was going seven and five. If you can get zero that team to buy into the disrespect card, then. I, yeah, I, I it was know. this like uh, uh, Jason Kelsey's brother, Travis Kelsey, when they won the Super Bowl was like, everyone doubted us and da, da, da. And Travis Kelsey, first of all, I would love to go grab a beer with those two brothers, man, and bring my brother too, who's a great dude, and just have a fucking field day out at the bars because they seem like a great time. Uh, but when he when he was going on and saying like everyone doubted us, I was like, I haven't never talked to anybody that doubted the Chiefs. Were no, really it was good. you know what it came from. It, it, it was a stupid thing about Tyreek Hill not being there anymore, and right. probably like, uh, okay. like one pundit was probably like, "Well, I don't think they're going to win the uh, AFC West or whatever." And then they yeah. probably just like sure. took it like your quote and said, "Here's the disrespect," you know. And it's yeah, like, like I, it's like the lowest yeah. hanging fruit. I don't know. It's like it's like an epidemic. I can promise you, no one in Arizona's locker room because I know multiple guys over there. Gave a shit about me talking about the, <laughs> the pool, dude. So it was bulletin board material not real? So I, I personally like it for the fans. I think that it's fun. And I think it's a great way to get into somebody's head, right? Like I think people really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. But inside a locker room, dude, get out of here. if you think Bryce Harper needed Orlando Arcia to say something, you know, or come at him in the locker room, for him to hit two homers in a playoff game. Have you never watched that guy play baseball before? I yeah, mean, yeah. it was fun, right? Like, he gets to run around the bases and look at Arcia. Because, I mean, he was you – know, Arcia talked shit directly at – I mean, not face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. but it was calling out a specific player in a negative connotation in a, in a play that was, you know, depending on where, what your opinion is of that decision – guy that's going to risk it all and try to win a game and he did it there and it backfired in that situation and you know everyone could have their opinion on what his decision was but you know rca calls him out and it was fun to have the the picture of him running around the bases looking at him but once again bryce harper's the greatest one of the greatest players on the planet we've seen him do it over and over and over again that's why we call him the showman mm -hmm. he doesn't need any more motivation than wanting a world series trophy to go hit two homers in a, in a, so, in a playoff game. So Kyle Stubbs says uh, bulletin board material is for the fans. The show has completely we, come full circle. We literally, right? for the first 20 minutes before you came on here, <laughs> talked about how bulletin board material was real because the San Francisco 49ers and Eagles are going back and forth, back and forth right now. <laughs> you just totally shit on that. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Not that's well, not even I mean, bulletin. That's, yeah, like, that's that Direct shit that was rivalry. That's yeah. rivalry stuff, yeah. right? Like I think we're talking bullet to board material being like specific like quotes or actions made by other players that yeah, right? And once again, I still don't think that that specifically like motivates a team. Like, come on. You're yeah. like once again, the trophy is what you're playing for. But as far as like like us and the Braves, right? Like so the guys on the Philly don't have Phillies don't have anything bad to say about specific Braves players. Like they're all pretty good dudes. Like, and we all, you know, we play each other a lot. Like we know each other personally. Those are all like good dudes over there. So there's no like personal animosity, but it's the Braves. Really yeah. Good. And when you go watch the Braves and the Phillies play, and even if you're not a Braves or Phillies fan, you should watch those baseball games because that is high level baseball being played whether it's the beginning of the regular season or in playoffs that is high level baseball and it's because both teams know when we walk onto that field you better bring it that day or else you're going to get your ass kicked yeah and it was I one thing there's one thing i told a lot of people uh about that series this year and not even not even just the playoffs but earlier in the year when you guys played 
it was, you know, the Braves were, they were blowing out everybody. And the one team they weren't blowing out was you guys. And it was like, they, they, the Braves know, just like the Phillies know that the Braves are a good team. The Braves know the Phillies are, are the one team that can really play with them. And so, yes, I agree a hundred percent. When you guys play each other, that is the highest level of baseball in 20, what was in 2023. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's that stays that way in 2024. No doubt. I mean, those are just two really good baseball teams going at it, man. And it's, it's fun to be a part of too. I mean, get to be able to be on one of those unreal baseball teams in the Phillies and then get to play one of those high caliber baseball teams in the Braves. That's a fun, that's, that's what kind of what you live for, right? Like that's, that's like why you play as a kid. You want to play the best prove that you're the best, right? Like that's, and we just happen to do it in our own division, which, you know, I bet both teams wish that we <laughs> wish, we didn't have to play each other as many times as we do because, you know, we beat up on each other. So that's kind of how our division works. It's in, it's maybe the best in all of baseball. I got one last one for you. I was anti-ovation. Am I an idiot? <laughs> for Trey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. Ben Simmons or Mark look, look, you're not an idiot prior to, right? Because – about Billy is that you don't do that, right? So what does this become like a thing where people get ovations or whatnot? Like when they start doing bad, I don't know. That's a that's a Philly fan base thing. But I'll tell you what, player watching that moment happen, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Looking back on it, it was really cool. But I was so cynical about it that I was yeah. just like, "This won't be cool until he just went on an absolute tear that you just you just couldn't." Well, could well, that's what I, right? I, like you're Philly Philly guy through and through. That's not what it, it, Philly guys do. It, it wasn't that it was no. I, I'm not like the mongrel, you know, like four for four Philly sports guy slamming beers on my head in the tailgate. I'm more like I just hated it because I thought like he's Trey fucking Turner. There's a reason why he's making what right. he's making. There's a reason why he was the biggest free agent. He's going to come around. All you got to do is check the back of the baseball card to know that he's one of the greatest shortstops in baseball. I just thought it was more the fans trying to make it all about them and everything. But, hey, listen, I'm gladly eating crow. because he. No, came you thought it was forced, right? I, you thought it was contrived was your like, complaint at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a good statement in and of itself, right? Like, look at the back of the baseball card. Trey Turner is Trey Turner, right? Like – He's going to come around. He's an unbelievable baseball player. But dude, when you're going up there mm -hmm. hit, and every at bat, when you start doing bad, the fans are booing you before you even get to the plate. We're all human, man. Even if you think or know how good you are as a player, we're human at the end of the day. And when you're going up there getting booed, that little doubt can start creeping inside your head. So, you know, is the is the ovation the reason Trey Turner – went off you know once again you Trey Turner's Trey Turner look at the back of the baseball card he's gonna do well but I it didn't hurt and it was fun to be a part of and it was a really cool moment it was a great engaging part of the season where the fans you know feel like they had a part of what Trey's success was and I'm not here to say that they weren't because that was a pretty big turning point for Trey and I think the guys in the in the dugout saw the way that the fans felt about Trey and, hey, you're going to be here for the next 13 years. Let's get it going. We're behind you, buddy. And, you know, kind of set us off from there. Pretty cool. Anyone else? No. I no was good. That was fun. Garrett, thanks for the time, man. We appreciate it. It was awesome. I always enjoy being on, man. If you guys ever ever want to have me on, you, you, know, you know where I'm at. <laughs> well, you, you, you know you need to do one of these on your own. We talked about post that career, back in hey, back in the July yeah. back in July, right? Yep. Hey, post baseball career, which I, you know, it comes to an end at some point for everybody. Uh, I hope it's years down the road. Uh, but I, you know, I would I would love to do something like this. I, I love talking baseball. I love talking sports in general. Um, it's fun for me, so no yeah. doubt. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, Talk thanks. soon. Nice thanks, Tom. Thanks. Woo. What an interview. Fun, man. What an interview. Fun. Two great, two great interviews this week, man. Jay was awesome and Stubbs was awesome too. Yeah. 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 Tonight. It's funny to hear that shit about the, the pool, man. Cause I 
<laughs> I feel like I, I feel like he just gave us a bunch of more. Like I, I honestly like my buddies in our group chat. Yeah, fucking roasting him. Like even a month after the the, the, yeah. the, the game was over, and I'm just like, dude, bulletin boards don't hit baseballs and get big outs. Like uh, it's it, we're talking about a backup catcher here, unfortunately. <laughs> like yeah, there's so much more bigger things that we need to focus on, and I'm just glad he. Kind of stuffed a couple people. It's more like, superstition than anything. It's like it's dumb fan and media shit. It's like, oh, don't get, don't jinx it. You know, don't give him anything. I'm like, and, I, you know, I don't, I don't think what he says about the natatorium is going to affect anything. And were you one of the uh, one of the reporters that apologized to him for how? Crazy no, it, that was in Arizona. I wasn't. I didn't travel. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, we talk all the time. I mean, we talk about bullshit all the time. But Stubbs is one of the best bullshitters. You know, to just talk, stand around and talk to. There's a lot of standing around in baseball. Mm-hmm. For as a as a uh, when you're in the meet when you're in the media, it's terrible. Because the schedule is so bad, you know, most people don't realize that we have to be down there four hours before first pitch <laughs> to start talking to players and coaches, right? So it's, well, you it's, were on this, you were on this very show at like like noon for like a <laughs> five o'clock game. I'm like, what the hell? What the hell is he doing down there? Yeah, I was already at, I was already at the already at the stadium. So there is a lot of time where you know the locker rooms open for an hour. And then they go out onto the field and they have their BP, fielding practice BP. But you always talk to guys out there, too, because you're out there for like an hour, hour and a half, it's sometimes even close to two hours. And so there's a lot of downtime to just BS about things. And Stubbs is one of the great BSers of all time. Like, I mean, it's 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 he's awesome. It was, you know, what was funny during the whole uh, Jamie Apodi, Matt Gelb, Jim Salisbury Nick Castellanos fatal four way from last year. Well, once one person, like one media member was DMing me and they're like, you know what? I would chalk this up to just a bunch of tired, like hot. It's hot. People are tired. They've been standing around for like 80 some games at this point. That's, that's all this is. It's just, people are just annoyed. (laughs) annoyed well, the, I mean, or cranky cranky there is right there is that element and it's not just it's not the standing around thing it's that you know these guys have to endure us every day of their lives <laughs> just as much as they have to endure each other or you know whatever i mean there's a lot of media it's a lot of media a lot of time for media to just show up and talk to you and you you're going to get annoyed a little bit because all we really do are ask questions right i mean there's not like yeah, are there conversations? Sure, here and there, but it's mostly us asking questions, and that can drive you nuts when it's happening every day for nine months, right? I mean, so so I get it. so right. which which media story do you like better? There were two dumpster fires earlier this week. There was Sports Illustrated using fake writers to, yeah. uh, to for AI generated content, and then there was Deadspin. Um, going after the kid in quote unquote blackface yeah. and wearing a chief's headdress. Um, in but, but both suck. Both suck. And, and I think that <laughs> it bothers me as a, as a writer, it bothers me more that they're using AI because the, the AI can't, can't bring the, the element of understand human understanding. Right. I mean, it can, nor could it can, the AI barf out the shit that Pagan and I come yeah, up you with. Think right. an, you think a robot's funnier than me, Ant? No, no, not at all. That's the point. Yeah, no. So that one bothers me more. But the, but the, 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 the yeah, the dead spin thing was, was just total, total shit show, man. That's what, awful. Just once awful. a robot learns how to hold a mic, I am fucked. I'll tell you that. I am. <laughs> yeah, ro- <laughs> yeah. AI on the street. Yeah. yeah. Hey. <laughs> Hey, you uh, think when a robot can stand in direct traffic with a with a little faux stop sign? No, then, that robot would trouble. be dead. That robot would be dead. <laughs> that robot would be hitched with a hitch pod at this point. Yeah, that robot would be. I'm light on my robot. feet. Hey, yeah. Ant. Yeah. Bradley Cooper wants an Oscar or wants a uh, Eagle Super Bowl over an Oscar. Yeah. You're a play guy. You invited me to one this weekend. I really appreciate you inviting yeah. me. Sorry that yeah. I couldn't go. That's all right. Would you rather a Tony for your performance? Or an Eagles Super Bowl this year? I'll take the Tony. You. They've already Eagles already won a Super Bowl. Prick. The Eagles already won a Super Bowl. <laughs> Bradley Cooper knows. Six years ago, they won a Super Bowl. Of course, he's going to say the Eagles. <laughs> oh, you said now you're going to liar. Well, yeah, of course, he's gonna, I'm not saying he's a liar. Maybe he really does, but of course, he's going to say he'd rather the Eagles Super Bowl. You know why? Because then everybody likes him more. If he says I'd rather have the the Academy Award, people are going to say you selfish prick. Right, I mean that's what they're going to say to him, you He's know, and, and they're not going to like him that much. They're like him a little Oscar bit less. Awards are for no one but ego. 
Super Bowls are for everyone. That's fine. But it's also a reward for the work that you've done. I couldn't tell you the last. He's one of the greatest. He's 0 for 9 in the Oscars, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, He's like Leonardo DiCaprio right now. He's in the DiCaprio zone. Um, It's ridiculous. But you can still be one of the best directors, best best actors in the world. You know, you could be one of the best actors in in Pennsylvania. I haven't seen it because I couldn't go. I'm sorry. That's all right. You know. That's fine. But that, but the point is, is that you know, every once in a while, you bust your ass for and to do what you do, and you're the best at what you do. You want to get a little bit of a reward for that, and you know, recognition sometimes. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. If the Eagles had not won in 2017, I think that the answer is an obvious answer. Okay. But the fact that they won six years ago, it's like okay, it's it's not like they haven't just won. T- Tony San Francisco over here. That's what you are. <laughs> Isn't that there kind of like a low? My, there's like a low key uh, kind of uh, thespian corner of Philadelphia sports media. Is there not? Ant, they're, they're, Ant San Francisco, Ray Dinger. Yeah, Ray's written. You know, he's written a play. Um, Glenn, Glenn's involved. Glenn, in, Glenn, Glenn's in a show at my theater. Uh, yeah. He's doing Young Frankenstein. He's playing Gene Hackman's role as the blind guy from Young Frankenstein. Um, he's doing that starting in two weeks. That opens, and then uh, you know, uh, you know the late big daddy Graham used to do show. I directed him in a show. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, Conklin does his stuff. I mean, he goes out to theaters and he sings and, and, and performs. Um, and uh, I'll, I've been working with you like this one. I've been working with Scott Palmer. Who's that? One-on-one. Do you remember? You don't, you don't remember Pagan? You don't remember Scott Palmer? Who's Scott he used Palmer? to be on channel six. It was the sports anchor on channel six. It was yeah. him and Gary Papa. Papa was the lead guy. Scott Palmer was the second guy. He was kind of like, you know, um, I guess the equivalent of, well, Deuces is now the number one guy. So it would have been like when, you know, what Deuces used to be when he was first at Channel 6. Got it. Um, but then, now, uh, now they've got Deuces and whoever's like on some suspension that we, mysterious suspension that we don't know. Yeah, about. exactly. There's Scott Palmer. So the Cody files. So yeah. Scott Palmer went to work, when he left Channel 6, he went to work for the Phillies. And, wow. um, so he's kind of like a in semi retirement now. Um, he still does stuff for the Phillies, but not full time. And he came up to me at a game uh, earlier in the summer and said, "You know, I'm really interested in getting into some doing some acting. Never really been trained at it, and so I've been working with him like one on one. Wow, kind of work, working on like as an acting coach for him. So yeah, like there, the is Gene, a, there is like a Gene Cusimano. I don't know if you saw Barry. <laughs> like the Gene yeah, Cusimano. That's Gene Cusimano from Barry. Yes, I, like uh, I do. I so we. I, yeah, I think that there is uh, there is some of that going on. That's good. It. This good uh, play and theater talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, Kincaid, my eyes I, you know, plays over. I'll tell you right now. If I if I get if I have my druthers and I get to direct that show, Rock of Ages, which is okay. all '80s rock music, mm-hmm. and I need a I need a lead guitarist to come up on that stage and play all those hard rock '80s classics. See? I'll do it. You know, I'm, I want you to come out. Yeah, I'll be Pagan, Zach Wild. You sing, Pagan. No, I got a nice uh, baritone. Yeah, well, you, the hills are alive with. No, the I don't want you to sing. Music. Yeah, no, that ain't happening. The fact yeah, that you, and I, San Francisco's went. Niners are gonna get their dicks punched in. <laughs> It's like a good, like operatic uh, kind of. You sound that. like you could be on the uh, J.G. Wentworth commercials. You know, I could do that. I would not be on the Philly specials. I'd be but a comedy, a play. Movie. I could see Pagan in a play. You could do a I comedy. Used do, I used to do. Um, I used to do. What's that thing? Not stand up, but uh, improv. Improv. I used to do improv. I did improv for a couple years. Loved improv. I used to do that thing. Fun, right? <laughs> no, improv oh, is okay. fun. It's fun. Yep. Always yeah. yesing. Always yesing. Yeah. Yes, yes and, and yes and. You know yes that sound like. My my parents met doing theater together. They were really? doing like, dude, bye bye birdie or some shit. Uh, Without theater, I don't think any of us would be here right now. We should do an unex- the was, unexplored a, a big feature story, was, ten thousand words on on the intersection, the intersectionality of of theater and Philly sports. It, it was my major in college. Well, I'm not, I'm not shocked about that. You're, but, you're but, but, and, and, and people said, well, what are you going to do with a theater major? And it, it led to so right many, right, right right, it led to, but it led to so many communication opportunities <laughs> just because you're, you're <laughs> good at bullshitting people, right? You're good at bullshitting people. So yeah. Now you're just bullshitting people. That's what I'm going to do, Dick. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. instead of bullshitting people on on stage, you're bullshitting <laughs> yeah, people on exactly. the, behind a laptop while wearing exactly. a San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so. Oh, these are man. all adjacent. These are all adjacent disciplines, you know. Yes, for sure. All right, fellas. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you. Thank you to Garrett yeah. Stubb. Thank you to Ann San Francisco. Thank you to Kev. Thank you to you, the listener. We appreciate everybody uh listening in and tuning in and stuff. It's been a lot of fun. Uh interviews like this are why, you know, it's a lot of fun to do. So uh we will talk to you on Monday when the birds are eleven and one, baby. Didn't you, didn't you pick the Niners? De- de- that that was my outro, all right? <laughs> yes and. <laughs>